Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Today we have a really interesting equation t squared minus t cubed equal to 36. We need to solve this equation for t, so if you have your solution, your assumption, you can also write it in the comments below, and then we will check our answer, so it will be really interesting. First of all, let's write the 36 on the left side. Let's do this like that. So we have t squared, so the same beginning, t squared minus t cubed and minus 36 is equal to 0. So I really hope you understand this first step. Secondly, instead of the 36, let's write 27 plus 9. A lot of students might be asking, why do we choose this expression? Why 27 plus 9? Just look at it. So we have t square minus t cube minus, instead of uh, 36, as I said before, we write 27, 27 plus 9 plus 9 equal to, equal to 0. Really great. And the last step, let's open parentheses. Let's write it. Mm, let's write it as minus 27 minus 9 without parentheses. So we have t square minus t cube minus 27 and minus 9. Of course, we can do this instantly. From here, we can write it as minus 27 minus 9. But I would just want you to understand why do we choose 27 and and 9. Just look at it. For example, we have 36. We have 36. There are a lot of ways how can we express this. For example, 18 plus 18 and a lot of ways. I don't want to write all of these uh, combinations, but why the best way right here is 27 plus 9. Why is this is the best, uh, the best way? Because 27 can be written as 3 cube and 9 can be written as 3 square. And right here we have t square and t cube. So then we can group our cubes and other squares. So I hope you understand this really important, important part. So let's do it right now. Let's group it. And first of all, let's write instead of 27, let's write 3 cubes. So we have t square minus t cube minus 3 cube and minus 3 square equal to 0. And right now, as I said before, we want to group. So we have t square, we're going to group with 3 square. We have t cube and we're going to group this with 3 cube. So let's do this. Let's start it. Uh, for example, right here. So let's start, for example, with squares. t square minus 3 square. This is our first expression. t square minus 3 square. So this is our first expression. We have minus. Right here we have t cube plus 3 cube because we have parentheses. So we have t cube plus 3 cube plus 3 cube equal to zero. Okay, really great. I really hope you understand this solution until this until this moment, because the next step is like a little bit different. Right now, we're going to scan. What do we have right here? We have difference of squares. Sounds familiar. Yeah, we, we learned, we remember this formula from school. And right here, thumb of two cubes. So let me just write these formulas right here. Maybe a lot of students here and they have problems with this formula. So here you can see it. So a square minus b squared. This is our formulas. And we have a minus b, a minus b, and times a plus b. Yeah, a plus b. So this is our formula. Second formula, sum of two cubes. A little bit different. Yeah, we have a different formula, different indices, different powers. So a cube plus b cube. Sum of two cubes equal to a plus b, a plus b. And in times parentheses, a square minus a b, minus a b and plus b square, so plus b, b square. Really great. And right now let's apply these formulas. <clears throat> right here we're going to apply difference of square, so let's start with this real quick. Uh, we have um, t minus 3, t plus 3, yeah, we have t minus 3, t minus 3, and times t plus 3, t plus 3, and the next formula we have minus sum of two cubes, so we have t plus 3, and we have t plus 3 according to a formula and in parentheses we have t square minus 3t and plus 9 plus 9 equal to equal to 0. Right now let's look at this question from a different, from another angle. Right here we have a lot of parentheses but the main thing t plus 3 right here and we have the same expression right here so we can actually factor this uh, t plus 3 as a common. So let's do it right now. So we have t plus 3 t plus 3 and in parentheses what do we have from here t minus 3 yeah we have t minus 3 first parenthesis minus from here and this one t square minus 3t plus 9 so t square minus 3t and plus plus 9 and equal to <coughs> equal to 0 really great right now t plus 3 we can't simplify this more this is our basic expression so we just leave it like that so t plus 3 
What about this expression? We can simplify this. We can write it, first of all, this without parentheses, so t minus 3. Right here, we need to change all the signs to the opposite ones. So we have minus t squared plus 3t and minus 9 equal to 0. Let's simplify this. Let's change an order because it looks like this is a quadratic equation. So let's change an order. Let's start with square, then next t, and the next are a constant. So we have the same beginning, t plus 3 plus 3. And what do we have in parentheses? In parentheses we have minus t square, so on the first position, so let's write it, minus t square. The next thing, t plus 3t, so plus 4t, plus 4t, and we have minus, minus 3, minus 9, we have minus 12, minus 12, equal to, equal to 0. Okay, really great. Right now, a product of two parentheses equal to zero when the first parenthesis is equal to zero, so the first branch, t plus 3, equal to zero, or the second branch equal to zero, so minus t square, yeah, we have minus t square, plus 4t, and minus 12 is equal to zero. But right here, it's really great to multiply it by minus 1, yeah, because we will have like a great order of signs. We prefer a classic order, t square, minus 4t, and plus, plus 12, plus 12 equal to 0. So we have two branches. This is our second branch, and this is our first, first branch. So let's start real quick with this branch, t plus 3 equal to 0. So from here, t first equal to minus, <coughs> minus 3. Really great. Really, really great. Right now, this one is a quadratic equation. So let's solve it with the basic method of coefficients, or like uh, you can choose your your method. Maybe you know in other theorems. I'm going to choose this uh, basic method of coefficients. Everyone knows about it. Everyone knows about this uh, method. So let's write it right here. Are the coefficients? So a equal to one, b equal to minus four and c equal to c equal to 12. Let's find real quick of a discriminant. Every time I have this quadratic equation, this is like from my perspective, this is up to you, you can plug in this discriminant into formula, this t second and t third, but I prefer finding real quick a discriminant and then plug in this discriminant, yeah? So we have b square <coughs> minus 4ac. As a result, what do we have? b square minus 4 square minus 4 times 1 and times and times 12. So equal to, we have 16 minus 4 times 12, we have 48. So as a result, 16 minus 48 equal to minus 32. So right here, our discriminant is less than 0. So it means that right here we have two, two, complex, two complex roots. Two complex roots we have at this, at this place. What are we going to do next? Let's find these roots, okay? We have one real number root right here, and we have to find our two complex roots. So that's why we write t second and t third equal to, we have minus b plus minus square root of discriminant and all over 2a equal to minus b minus, but b equal to minus 4, so let's double this sign, yeah? Plus minus square root of discriminant square root of minus 32 and all over 2 times uh, 2 times 1. Let's simplify this. Real quick right here, minus minus, we have plus as a result, so we have only 4 plus minus square root of minus 32. We can write it, uh, this 32, as a times 4 or different different way, but the best way to express this minus 32 as 16 times 2, and don't forget about minus 1. So we have three, three constants, so over, over 2. <coughs> Right now we can easily split it. We can write it as 16 times square root of 2 and times square root of minus 1. There is uh, uh, property, square root property, so I really hope you understand it. It works with division and uh, multiplication, but not doesn't work with, uh, with addition and subtraction. So we have 4 plus minus square root of 16 times square root of 2 and times square root of minus minus 1 over over 2. Really great. Square root of 16, this is all known. So we have 4 plus minus. Right here we have 4, square root of 2, and square root of minus 1, this is our imaginary unit. This is our i over 2. So equal to, and final thing, uh, of course this is up to you if it's necessary, but I prefer dividing this numerator uh, by 2 and uh, 2 by parts. This dividing by 2 and this dividing by 2. 4 square root of 2 i over 2. And a lot of students may be asking why do I, why do, I um, do this thing? Because uh, the, we can split it by real parts. So right here we have real part 2 plus minus 2 square root of 2 times uh, 2 square root of 2 times i. This is our real part 
and this our imaginary imaginary part. And this is my solution to this question. Right now let's gather all the roots uh, together and let's write our final answer to this uh, to this question. So first of all, t first equal to minus 3, <coughs> t second and t third equal to 2 plus minus 2 square root of 2 times i. So we have two complex roots and one real real number root. And in the end, let's check real quick our t first equal to minus 3. This one we don't need uh, to check because every time you have a classic equation, every time uh, even teachers, they prefer checking this real number root. This one is not necessary. So let's check real quick. So check. We have t square minus t cube equal to 36. So right now let's plug in this minus 3. So 4 t equal to minus 3. What do we have as a result? Minus 3 square minus minus 3 cube equal to 36. So let's let's find out uh, is it correct or not. So minus 3 square equal to 9 minus minus 3 cube equal to not like 27 but minus 27 because we have an odd power minus 27. And as a result everything is great because right here we have 9 plus 27 equal to 30, 36. So our root is absolutely absolutely correct. And a lot of students might be asking, maybe right here we have like a uh, fourth root, first, fifth root. And here's my quick tip, here, here's my quick hint, because a lot of students uh, forget about the theorem. Uh, there's like a theorem which is called a uh, fundamental theorem of algebra. So every time you have an equation, doesn't matter what a power, like it can be like 10th power, 20th power. So every time, for example, in our question, yeah, we have t squared, t cubed, and 36. So what is the highest power in our question? So uh, we're talking about what variables, yeah? We have variable t. What is the highest power? 2 or 3? Of course 3 is the highest power. So according to a fundamental theorem of algebra, it means that we have three roots in total. In our question, one real, two complex roots. And this is extremely important part. If you don't understand, for example, these cubes, just look at the square part. So right here we have a quadratic equation. How many roots do we get from here? Two roots. And because 2 is the highest power. Linear function, t plus 3 equal to 0. So as a result, we have one root. t first equal to minus 3. I hope you understand this quick tip. So every time you have, for example, t to the power 5, it means 5 roots in total. We don't know exactly how many real number roots, how many complex roots. It can be 2, 3, 3, 3, 2, 1, 4. We don't know exactly because it depends on, on the equation. How, how, we, how does it, how our equation looks like? Okay, so I really hope you understand my thoughts about it. Uh, if you have any question, write a question in the comments below. What do you think about this question? And one, one more moment, because a lot of students uh, try to solve this question by inspection. They might be saying, okay, t first equal to minus 3, I find the root by inspection, but just, I want to say one really important, and I would say like key moment, because if you solve this question by inspection, then you forget about second branch, you forget about this complex uh, complex part, which is also extremely important, because you forget about, about two roots, so you can't say that you solve this question completely. Every time you have a, an equation, secondly, you just scan what is the highest power, it means, oh, I have like a three, third power, so it means three roots, I find one root by inspection, but I have to find two more roots. And it's it's also really interesting thing, so I really want you to, to understand it. So thank you everyone for your time, take care of yourself, have a great day, write the thoughts, write to respond in the comments below, we have a really interesting, really great community here, a lot of teachers, a lot of students all over the world from different countries, we discuss about math, so write your thoughts about this question, write your stories, if you're a teacher, write your, your stories, if you're, if you're a student, maybe you have this uh, type of question somewhere, so it's it's also really great. So thank you for your time, take care of yourself, have a great day, and see you in the next videos.